So I had to learn that if I'm going to get the most out of training, I have to pace myself and I have to... <sighs> G'day. And I'm an 800 meter runner who just moved from the small town in the country to the big city of Melbourne in the pursuit of one thing, my quest to in running to achieve my dream. Now, if you want to know exactly what my dream is that I'm going to be talking about and, and what my quest exactly is that I'm discussing, then I suggest you to check out my video that I made previously called Origin Story, which you can find, I believe, at this icon attachment link that YouTube provides at the uh, above. Because the reason why I'm not gonna be saying it every single time, and when I am referring to it, I'll be encapsulating it as quest or dream or goal, is because studies have been done that if you verbalize out loud your goal and too much, then you can actually trick your brain into perceiving that you've actually achieved your goal when you haven't and you start to lose motivation towards. Anyway, so I thought what would make a great video, my first episode of my journey, is to talk about the challenges and difficulties and the adjustments I've had to make in my way of life from transitioning from living in the country and growing up there all my life to that lifestyle to the big city of Melbourne and the different lifestyle changes and adjustments that I had to make along the way for me to have successfully survive my first month in the city, which I'm pretty proud of. First, didn't know how I was going to do it. Anyway, so one of the main challenges that I was faced with first and that I recognized even before moving here was the difference between driving your car in the country to driving your car in the city. Now, there was a couple main differences differences, but one notable one is the difference in traffic. So in this country, you never really had to worry about congestion on the streets because only around, you know, we had peak hours as well, but our peak hours didn't delay us 20 minutes from commute. And the dist and also notable thing too is the distance it takes to get to certain locations in, in the country as well. So for me to get to training, it took 15 minutes or less just to get to the athletics track. Um, or to get to the other side of where I used to live, Aubrey, it took me around 20 minutes. Whereas in Melbourne, man, how long does it take you from traveling to the west suburbs to the east suburbs of Melbourne? At least an hour or two hours to do. So notably that. In Melbourne, it takes me anywhere from 48 minutes peak hour to travel to training, 21 minutes if it's not peak hour, which is not too bad, still significantly a lot more. And another aspect that I had to get used to sharing the road with trans and how the transportation of trans were, Mikey and all this stuff that did not exist in Aubrey. The biggest thing with trans that I had to learn was the whole aspect of when you're driving with them, that all the rules and caveats that evolve around when you're driving with trans, which took me a bit to learn. Uh, thankfully, it didn't kill anyone. <laughs> like, for example, how if a tram stops, you don't just keep driving to overtake them. You have to stop with them to let passengers come on and off of the tram. And then another obvious um, difference in driving was the traffic level. Uh, significantly larger because due to a bigger population. But to summarize it, when I was first driving around Melbourne, my heart, <laughs> every time I had to commute to work, to, to training, to get groceries, I had the adrenaline rush every single time, which thankfully I had Google Map. I understood why, because three things. It was busier, unfamiliar place, and there are all these new rules that I had to get used to, like with trans and hook turns as well. But the advantage is it's busier. Now with it being busier, that means everything is slower. It allows you time for you to get your bearings in check. So another challenge on a different aspect that I had to learn to overcome was the financial part. Now, this financial part was very, very terrifying when I first moved here. So I recognized when I was in Aubrey, when you move somewhere new, especially somewhere like the city, there's going to be new expenses and there'll be expenses that I'm unaware of and there'll be higher expenses 
expenses as well since I'm living out of home. So fortunately I pre-planned and I was taking on extra work to build up a safety net so then when I moved here, I could meet those extra costs and expenses. But uh, something I didn't plan for was this. So when I moved here and I calculated my, my income would be and what my financial situation was looking like, I planned it in the anticipation that I would get uh, the stay out of home youth allowance rate because currently I'm on youth allowance, but I learned I'm, I'm on the, I'm actually on the job seeker version, which is very different to the normal version of youth allowance. So what happened was I was expecting that I'll get double of the money from youth allowance that I was getting living at home in Aubrey. And what, the very next day when I went to Centrelink, I was told I'm uneligible for, for that stay out of home rate and also for rent assistance. So they basically told me that I was, I'm just going to get paid the same as I was living in Aubrey, which that ended up leaving me when I did the calculations with $84 a week to live off. And that's only your fixed income covering your fixed costs. So I'm in the positive, but all it takes is, well, that's not covering groceries, which groceries I learned, uh, the cost of living is quite high, especially uh, with olive oil. Like, that's ridiculous. And me. And, and all it could take for me is just one thing to go wrong with my car or any device or anything with me. And then boom, I'm already in the negative. So I knew I could not survive like this. And just for some context on why I couldn't get that stay of home youth allowance bracket was due to, since I'm studying my course online, uh, Centrelink saw it as I had no reason to move from Aubrey to Melbourne for course study because that's why they pay me. So there you go. There's no reason for them to pay me more. But oh well. <laughs> so anyway, I put myself out there because I took a similar strategy to what I implemented to build up my say to build to get extra work in Aubrey to Melbourne, you know, offering my services, cleaning and lawn mowing and various other tasks like that. And I put it up on Facebook. But I found out that that didn't quite work as well as Aubrey because here in Melbourne, the Facebook group chats aren't clogged up in one. There isn't one predominant one with 80,000 members like Aubrey. Here, the, it's very spread out. And I didn't get much success at all with that, but someone suggested to look on Gumtree and I found an ad doing some cleaning for someone and I got it. So they ended up putting me in a positive position where at least I had $200 at least to live off each week, which is much better than $84. And this, it didn't happen overnight. That's that's the thing with these things that I'm talking to you, right? Like with most challenges in life and most results in life, it's never like this. It takes time. And for the first week or two, yeah, I was in the negative. It took me two weeks for me to finally get that job opportunity. For, so for those first two weeks, I had anxiety every single day, just thinking, how am I going to survive here if I'm in the negative? But fortunately, it all worked out. Now, another challenge that I had to face was, well, so one of the main reasons why I moved to Melbourne was for the purpose of, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger recognized in his life, that if he wanted, if he was serious about about becoming the best bodybuilder in the world, he had to be where all the best bodybuilders in the world was. So after he won his first amateur uh, Mr. Universe title in Europe, he, at the age of 21, he moved to America where the biggest bodybuilding competitions and competitors all were. So just like me, I recognize that for me, the closest city to me is Melbourne and that's where predominantly all the running in Australia is. It's also in Sydney and other places like that, but it's so for me, what it provided was all the competitions were in Melbourne. So during the athletic season, it took me three hours to get to Melbourne and then I had to find accommodation. Then I'll do my race and then I'll have to make the trip three hours back. Now that got annoying, but now it's all here. And also another aspect as well is all the all the competition are here as well. So in Aubrey, fortunately, I was lucky to have one other runner who was also dedicated and he also was at a similar ability to me as well. Uh, so I was able to get that push. But here, because in Aubrey, you have sprinters, you have mar you have long distance runners and lots of groups doing longer distance stuff. But when it comes to middle distance, there's zipper. I was only fortunate to have one other dude who was also running the same as me. But if I was serious about pursuing my goal, I had to be where everyone else was. So one of the biggest challenges was when I made it here was the training. Now, so when I moved here previously before, I was running an average weekly 29k and when I moved here, I slowly learned that the group I'm training with has does a lot more mileage.
challenge than what I was previously accustomed to. And a lot of different workouts that I'm not used to. But that's great because I don't want to be the best at wherever I show up to because then I won't grow. Then I'm just at the same position as I was in Aubrey, which that was one of the main uh, motivators for me as well was just if I'm serious about moving, I've got to have no regrets. And, and the one thought that I don't want to have in Melbourne is, oh, this was a mistake, which I don't. Don't worry about that. Oh, you get get a sore throat a bit when you talk so much. So just an example to get you a bit of a picture on what I'm talking about. So in Aubrey, I was used to doing a warm up of 1.6K at max. Then when I moved on training with Group Hippo Track Club with Mark Hippo, they would do double that. So they would run around the tan and that'd be 3.2K. Unbelievable. <laughs> That is so much more. And that's before the training session. And then the training session can average from 6K to anywhere from 8K, as far as I'm aware. I think it goes higher, which in Aubrey, uh, the max I was doing at the time was 4K session. It was much more spread out and the breaks were le uh, longer. And well, the intensity was higher, but this was the athletic season. But anyway, the first workout I went to, I got smashed. I got absolutely whooped. <laughs> Which, at first, um, biggest lesson that I had to learn from moving here in training was to pace myself. Because I could I could run at their speed. I could do that, no problem. But I wouldn't be able to make it through the whole workout. Because, obviously, you know, I'm not used to that more aerobic side that I have to build up compared to these guys. So the first workout I went to, oh, this, this is what happened. So I had to do... I had to think I had to do, so it was 18 300s with 90 seconds rest and four minutes in between the recoveries of the sets, which I think the workout was broken up into sixes. So you do six 300s, then a four minute break. I'm pretty sure people will probably correct me on that. But anyway, uh, so what ended up happening was, so I was running at the pace. So you had to do 51 seconds. That was the target for every 300. And the guys there said to themselves, wow, I feel pretty fit guys. How about we change the rest between the 300s to 60 seconds instead of 90. And then they do that and I'm like, and I'm already in my head like, because the first three were all right, but after that, I was like, really? I'm just, I just got here. No way I'm doing that. I'm already feeling it. But I'm like, all right, I have to, I have to show my worth. So I went through it anyway. And then we complete the set. And then the guys said this, hey, you know, I'm feeling pretty good today. How about instead of four minutes, rest let's do three minutes rest instead and i'm like and i finished the first set barely and i'm just like oh you're joking are you serious i just got through that and then I do that, but then by, so I'm, I'm keeping with their pace for rep seven, rep eight, but then rep nine, rep 10, rep 11, I just slowly started to, to lose the pace because I couldn't, couldn't keep up with them. And that's kind of when I learned, okay, this is, I have to pace myself. Like it's going to take time for me to build up with this mileage, especially like you got to consider I've, I've already run a 3k beforehand and I'm not accustomed to that like these guys as well. So I had to learn that if I'm going to get the most out of training, I have to pay pace myself and I have to run my own. It's like running your own race when I mean pace yourself. I have to recognize that, okay, look, I'm not as fit as these guys at the moment and yet. So they can run faster than me. That's okay. I'm going to run at my pace that I feel like I'm working myself, but not killing myself that allows me to get through, to do the mileage. And then later on, as I build up my fitness, I can start running more up with these guys and maybe start leading some workouts. But but I've got to respect my body and I've got to respect that it takes time to build that up. Just like with my quest, it's going to take me time to build it up. And the mindset that I have in running at the moment is I'm in this for 20 years, which I got that concept from this book right here called There's No Plan B for Your A Game by Bo Eason where the mindset is, you're in this for 20 years, so there you go, treat it like there's no room for shortcuts, which ultimately the best of the best, don't take shortcuts because ultimately it's the little things that make the biggest difference. But anyway, that's just an encapsulation of some of the, my update. Now, one other aspect that I almost forgot to touch on that was a challenge was maintaining communication with my family and friends and all those who, have already been a part of my journey at home. Now, it was easy before, you know, when you live at home to keep in communication with 
your family and loved ones and family is, well, you see them every day. It was like that at school. You would see your friends every day. You would go and with family, you would always come home with them because you lived with them. You would eat dinner with them, breakfast, I hope. I did. I don't know about you. And with those connections, they were in your life there. But now you've just picked it all up and just moved it all here. And now how do you maintain communication with them? Well, one of the main strategies I've been implementing is just with family. I'll play chess with my family members. So we'll constantly, you know, like online, it'll be a game that goes for a whole, it takes, you have 14 days to have your turn. And that was pretty fun as well. And uh, I would make phone calls to them and shoot them little text messages as updates, which that's what I've been doing with my friends and take photos of the, the cool bread that I'm cooking as well. I cook bread, you know, I'm a bit of a baker myself too. And also send update by training, but it's pretty time consuming and sometimes you forget. So a strategy that I'm thinking will be beneficial and this channel can serve that purpose is they want to know, they want to, you know, follow my journey okay. further because that's the importance of the story. Like I've been, I've told them my story. I've told them why I'm pursuing my, my quest and what a crap ending it would be if the, the main character he just moves and then you don't hear anything from him again that's a shit ending isn't it to a story so whereas when i'm making these videos they ever want to go oh what's eric up to they can follow this channel and my journey and then can still keep communication that because that's the main purpose of this channel so yeah now remember it's never too late to start your dreams